Um, my name is Sophie. I'm from People's Food Co-op. I'm the marketing and membership manager um, and a collective manager. Um, so uh, People's was founded in 1970. We have about um, 2,100 square feet of our, in retail, um, which is teeny tiny, and we do a little over $5 million in sales every year. So we're pushing a lot of product out of a really small space. Um, and the other important thing to know about Peoples is that we're collectively managed. So the, the store is managed by 30 staff, which creates a kind of different management dynamic. Um, and I also want to say that like, I'm talking about these things as one collective manager, and probably some of my coworkers would be frustrated by what I'm going to say. Um, and I'm also a white person, which adds another element that I just want to speak to both of those things before I get started. Um, so um, we're also thinking about opening a second store in a neighborhood that is a lot more racially diverse than the neighborhood that we're currently located. And also it has a lot um, lower income overall. And so those are two things that we're really thinking about and as we're moving forward and opening a second store. Um, social justice is in our end statement. And so um, the board adopted our last end statement in 2007. And um, it's, it's hard for me to talk about the whole history. I've been at People's for about three years. But Todd and Miles and Joel have been around for a lot longer than that. Um, so you could ask them about these things, too. Um, but that you know, shows up at our store in some really concrete ways. We have a Black Lives Matter sign outside, and we have a lot of conversations about white supremacy and misogyny on staff almost constantly. Um, and so it's been really important as staff are having all of these conversations about social justice that we figure out how to communicate those values to a broader customer, customer base that's not necessarily thinking about that when they're showing up at the co-op. Um, and when I started in my role, there wasn't a lot of external communication with member owners and with customers about those issues. And so it became really important for me to start gal to galvanize our staff to do that a little bit more intentionally and at least try to let folks know what conversations staff are having. Um, and so we've done a lot of register roundups at the, um, at the register roundup fundraisers at the register um, for things like Black Lives Matter and a lot of other radical groups in Portland. Um, we have a lot of events in the community room that are um, creating more conversations around social justice. We've also invited um, people of color and other like social justice oriented groups in Portland to come hold events in our space um, to try to, um, to make peoples a place where those things happen in town. Um, we've offered other resources to POC-led groups, people, groups led by people of color and other social justice organizations through our donations budget also. Um, and uh, we make other subtle changes too, like we have um, pronouns on our name tags that staff, staff wear and a sign at the register asking customers not to assume the gender of workers. Um, we also don't have a lot of banjos at our farmer's market. We really try to create programming that is appealing to folks that aren't necessarily the traditional co-op customer. Um, and we've also heard from shoppers, kind of like Dave alluded to, that having more people of color on our front end staff makes them feel more comfortable shopping in the store. And so um, we've tried to be aware of and intentional around those dynamics also. And those, um, I feel really proud that we've done all of those things. And also, there is so much more to do, especially as we're thinking about locating in this really different neighborhood. Um, for context, the zip code that Peoples is located in is about 88% white. And according to our member owner survey, um, our member owners basically reflect that demographic. Um, so one question I'm really asking as we're thinking about locating in this new neighborhood is how do we make ownership financially accessible to all members of the community? How do we give folks that don't think they have $180 to invest in the co-op or even $30 today um, to be able to have a voice and ownership over our organization? Um, another question, we really want our staff to reflect a new neighborhood and we want our staff to reflect the neighborhood that we're in also. So. Um, how can our touchy-feely, really word-heavy, process-oriented workplace also be somewhere where all kinds of people can um, feel like they can succeed? Um, we're also wondering if it's possible for us to open a neighborhood that's developing really rapidly and experiencing a lot of gentrification and displacement 
can we be a place that helps to mitigate the effects of those problems in some way? Or can we at least be a resource to people that are already in the neighborhood and have been in the neighborhood for a long time? And that's a lot, those are a lot of hard questions. And I want to be clear also that um, uh, really trying to talk about social, social justice with our community has had some, has brought up some really difficult situations. Um, we've, it's really hard when you have a staff that's talking about racism and misogyny and transphobia all the time to figure out what language to use when staff are talking to member owners and customers about those issues or trying to um, call out problematic behavior in a way that doesn't totally alienate and discard those people. Um, it's, we've also triggered a lot of racism and misogyny and other really inappropriate behavior that we've had to figure out how to have a process around. And we haven't always done a great job, but I feel confident that we can do better. Um, we also have the issue of holding staff and board members accountable to behavior that um, isn't reflective of those values. And that has also been messy um, work. But ultimately, I believe that co-ops are social justice or social change organizations. Um, since the 70s, we have radically changed the culture in America, particularly around food, but in other ways too. And now that that's happened, I think we have to find our footing and figure out what we're going to stand for for the next 50 years. What's the change that we want to make going forward? And I think that these social justice values are a place where we can really try to embody something different and be a model for a better way for businesses to be in the world. Um, so p places like People's are never going to be able to compete with Amazon. We're never going to be able to be New Seasons. <laughs> and so what, what is our stake and what do we want to do and why do we want people to come there? So those are the questions that I'm asking myself. Mm -hmm.